<laughs> and that Navaj will help you breathe better. But what do other people say about Navaj? Like Haley, quote, Navaj is the best thing I bought. I love it. My nose feels so clear now and I can breathe. I've been struggling with a stuffy nose for weeks. I bought Navaj and it's amazing. Or this one. I use Navaj every night, could not imagine life without it. I have five cats, and before I found Navaj, I was a clogged mess. Now I breathe so much better, unquote. Those are two of over 100,000 online reviews praising Navaj, the all-natural solution trusted by over 3 million people to help you breathe better, sleep deeper, snore less, and stay healthier without drugs. Navaj is available at Walmart, CVS, Walgreens, Target, Rite Aid, and online. Navaj, N-A-V-A-G-E, clean nose, healthy life. You're listening to 1050 ESPN, your home for New York Islanders hockey, WEPN, New York. Good Karma Brands Radio Station. It's on Jay Will and Max. Do you think we, you could survive one round with an amateur boxer? No. At 50 with a bad back? No. No? No. No. <laughs> no, not even. I mean, you know, like. I want a box key. I think Key and I should do like a charity boxing match. You want to fight me? Yeah. No, I wouldn't do it if I was you, Key. I I'd leave him alone. Jay's been boxing since he was a little kid. You want a box key? You want to do it for charity? Just look at me. Keyshawn, J. Will and Max, ESPN Radio, Sirius XM Channel 80. What is going on this morning, guys? Hey, Jay, we asked last week, I asked, you know, is this March Madness? Is it like mad enough for you, right? And I think the kind of consensus on this show was that it's kind of standard issue March Madness. It's nothing extra. Let me ask you something. Sweet 16 all set. Is it extra? I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm, I'm a little angry this morning. Over. Um, oh, yeah. Well, well because, question. you know, I'm trying to think of what it could be. I bet a lot of money on Gonzaga. Mm-hmm. Spread was four and a half. I felt comfortable. Mm-hmm. I, I felt very comfortable. Uh, you know, Gonzaga had a fast break. You know, you talk about eight and a half seconds left, Max. They're up seven. Dunk, right? Come down. TCU then comes back. Oh, boom, boom, boom. They hit a three. I'm like, all right, up four. They're going to foul. We're going to make a free throw. We'll be okay. All How right. much time left at this point? It's like, uh, I want to say with the foul, there's like four and a half seconds left. Right. All right. It's okay. Go to the free throw line. Gonzaga, bang, bang. They make two free throws up six. Ah, okay. Spread cool. four and a half, you said? 0. 0.77 seconds left. Yeah. 0. 0.7 seconds left. Game's over, okay? So in my brain, crazy gambler, just push up, Gonzaga. Push, push up a little bit. The game within the game isn't push over. Push up a little bit. Just, you know, make them catch the ball in the backcourt. Make them heave a shot. Game over. I win my money. I'm coming into work today on a Monday, the worst day of the week, a happy man. A happy man. No. They let the ball just all the way up the court. Nobody touches it. The kid from TCU gets the ball, heaves it up with 0.7 seconds left. Ball goes in. I lose money. Four. So they went by four. You know what? That was four and a half. You know what I'm hearing in my ear? What? There is someone in the control room. It didn't work out for you. But the, by the way, the hilarious thing is the game is over. It's just not, it doesn't f- affect the outcome of the game. This is for the gamblers. But there's someone in, 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 in the control room right now, Jay. Your misery was their happiness. Oh, yeah, I needed that, Jay. I needed that bad. Sorry. <laughs> I had fairly Dickinson plus 15, Miami money line, TCU plus four and a half. Wait, a oh, parlay? Little parlay. So you, and you hit it? A little so you, parlay action. So you hit your parlay. Uh, a couple of them, yeah. All right, three legs, not Count bad. In. Yeah, three legs, small. What'd you, small, what'd you small, times small. your money? Hold on, what'd you make times your, like, you put in a dollar, what'd you make? Well, I had a very non-lucrative day, so I only put 10 on it to win about, like, 78, uh, 80. Okay. So, you know. Yeah. Three yeah. legs is cool. Thanks for the, thanks for the backdoor <laughs> coverage, Jay, I'm sorry. But, yes, can we talk about the fact, like, why do you let the ball just go all the way up the court? Like, let's just Jay. head at it, jab at it, push up, stunt and get back. Do any, something, do anything something. Anything other than do- the end result. Yeah, I'm watching. Don't right let the now. kid it's just shoot game. it wide open and then goes in, and then I'm yelling at the TV, and I'm happy because I you seem lost. more yeah you seem more upset about this than about your own squad losing. Oh no no it's a it's a it's a accumulation of all of it. 
All right. Yeah, it's it's up. I mean, I felt good because my wife and my brother in law were talking trash about IU going further in tournament than Duke, and then how much the ACC stinks, and then the ACC beat the Big Ten last night, which made me happy. IU's going home. That makes me happy. The question. Rem- to get into the tournament, right? It was supposed to be a tough year for them. Like, Tom Izzo, once again, like, they find a way to grind through the regular season. Nobody expects Favorite time of the I'm year. I'm not you know asking why? that. You know why? Because we got teams that always end up losing. We got Purdue that lost to two Jersey schools back-to-back. That's what Last it year was St. Peter's. This year is fairly Dickinson. We got Princeton in the Sweet 16. Who the hell saw that? This is what I'm saying. When we had a 215 in the first round, it was like, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's excellent. It's like, but it's standard issue March Madness, which is to say, excellent. It's mayhem, and you don't know what's going to happen. But it's not like, oh my God, this is extra. I think when a one seed gets bumped, Jay, and an Ivy League school is in the Sweet 16. I would say this is a little extra, even by March Madness standards. You don't think so? Six teams don't normally lose. Uh, ones I mean, we, don't normally we've lose. We've had a sixteen lose before. I mean, we had sixteen. Time. Yeah, one time. Yeah, we've had it. Yeah, we had to it again. Yes, that right. makes it. That means it means that the, I mean, look, but it's but, a rare thing, even by so, tournament standards. So the two things last week we were all hot about UVA and Tony Bennett. We talked about their uh, history in the NCAA tournament, with the exception of them winning it in two thousand nineteen. That was a big thing. And, and today you talk about Matt Painter, obviously. I mean, you talk about them losing three years ago. You talk about them losing to a 15 seed before, and then them losing to a 16 seed being the number one overall seed. How about this even further? Every single year, all I hear in college basketball is how hype people get about the Big Ten, right? You know the last time the Big Ten won a championship? Guess when, Max? Keep, keep, yeah, keep, take a guess. Take a random guess. Just any number, please, for the sake of a number. Twelve years. Two thousand. Michigan State. I was going to say Michigan State. Michigan State. That was Jason Richardson, that King was Cleves. Three years ago. Yeah, yeah. It's the last time, and but every single year they are ranked one of the top two, top three conferences. Don't get old, kids. They had eight teams in the tournament this year. Now, look, the ACC didn't do well either, but nobody was talking about the ACC being one of the top conferences in the nation. So once again, Michigan State, a team that people didn't really project to get into the tournament, right? It was supposed to be a tough year for them. Like Tom Izzo, once again, like they find a way to grind through the regular season. Nobody expects them to do anything. And they're the lone representation of the Big Ten in the Sweet 16. And had to get by a good competitive team to do it in a in Carrying a the torch, Tom Izzo, game. once again. Yep. That's where we are. But Purdue's going home. Who's the best coach in college basketball right now? Men's college basketball. I would still say Bill Self. But how about the I would tur- still say Bill Self. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, what would you rather see? A Cinderella run or the powerhouse matchup, Jay? Something you were talking about last night. So I, I love I love the Cinderella run. I do. I think it gives you a chance to learn new things about a sport. The problem is with college basketball is most people – don't pay attention to you get to this stuff during a tournament. So the teams that we sell college basketball on, right, the, the brand name teams, pretty much the bigger teams, because you guys don't want to hear about Princeton throughout the course of the regular season. Like right. Nobody's like, oh, well, Princeton, I'm telling you, like, oh, whatever. We're talking football. We're, we're talking NFL. We're talking college, right, college football. So you want to hear about the brand names, the guys you're supposed to know about, like Brandon Miller, Alabama, they're a brand name. On withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at fanduel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. one 800 9 
with it in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369 in New York, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming or visit 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. This ring is a commitment. After we got married, I got very sick. He will come every day to help me walk again. And now I'm back. This is a reminder that love endures all. Express your extraordinary love. Jared, love brilliantly. Can you hear me calling? What if we live to 100? I don't want to outlive our money. I keep eating all these chia seeds. I could live to be 100. We work us in power. Even if we do live to 100, we don't have to worry. <laughs> Not worried. <laughs> Take control of your financial future to empower what's next. All right. Do you guys want to do a little swap? I mean, yeah, I could be into it. <laughs> Just like a one-time casual thing with Tyler? or I was talking about switching up teams. John Jay Willimax, ESPN Radio. You can click more on the lower right-hand corner of the ESPN app and scroll down to live radio, and you are not tethered to the radio in your car. You get to work, time to go in, no problem. We're on the app. You can listen live. Jay? Mornings with DiPietro and Rothenberg. I think Aaron Rodgers understands what he's going to step into here, what the expectations are going to be. All the Jets' chips are on the table, man. I mean, he's putting a tremendous amount of pressure on himself. I think a lot of people use Tom Brady as the example. He steps right into Tampa and they win a Super Bowl. I think it's unfair. Super Bowl or bust, though. It's unfair, especially in the AFC. Just imagine that they actually go through this list and get every player on this list, including Odell Beckham. Okay. You can't fight against the expectation. You can't. DiPietro and Rothenberg. Morning 6 to 10 on 98.7 ESPN. Hey, it's Ricky Pietro. When I want to tell you about the Jack Pocket app, we can play official state lottery games like Powerball and Mega Millions. It's so simple. It's right on your phone. Lottery players on Jack Pocket have now won over $200 million, and Jack Pocket is the top-ranked lottery app in the U.S. No more waiting on lines. You can play anytime, anywhere. Download the app for free or visit jackpocket.com and get your first Mega Million or Powerball ticket free using code ESPN. That's code ESPN for your first ticket free. Must be 18 older to play. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY. Visit Jack pocket.com slash TOS for full terms of service. Do you want to gain stability, benefits, and experience? As a youth development specialist with the City of New York, you can build a solid civil service career working with NYC's youth. Start earning over $47,000 in three months. You can get $2,500 bonus, earn a pension, paid overtime, health care, and in just five years, over $60,000. Apply now at nyc.gov slash YBS. Make a difference in the lives of our youth. Become a youth development specialist today. Learn more at nyc dot gov slash ybs at Wendy's, you don't need a psychic to tell you your hamburger's gonna taste great. Excuse me? Because every square hamburger is a sign you're getting the best. Did someone say sign? And now, with the offer in the Wendy's app, you can get the always delicious Dave single for just one dollar. Uh, thanks. I got you. I am a psychic, after all. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's $1 Dave single. Limited time only at participating Wendy's. Offering Wendy's app account registration and mobile purchase required. Not valid in combo or with other offers. The all-new weekend wager comes to 98.7 ESPN on Friday nights at 10 p.m. Hold on, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished? When I would have asked tomorrow, y'all thought it was ready? Jetting on him. Keyshawn J. Will and X, ESPN Radio. You can click more on the lower right-hand corner of the ESPN app and scroll down to live radio, and you are not tethered to the radio in your car. You get to work, time to go in, no problem. We're on the app. You can listen live. Jay, for a lot of the year, um, Jokic was having an incredible year. And Embiid and Giannis were right there and a couple other guys. 
when KD was healthy, he was playing, I think, the best basketball in the world. But Tim Bontemps did a straw poll, as he does every year, here on ESPN, ESPN.com. And... It's seen as a pretty good indicator of. Hey, like to me, like this is a race. I, I think if I were to like hierarchy them right now, mm -hmm. create a hierarchy, it would have Joel Embiid mm -hmm. with a slight edge over Giannis. Mm -hmm. And then I'll have Jokic third. I agree. That's it, my, it's Embiid's to lose right that's, now. that's been yours and my order, although you had Giannis slightly ahead of Embiid. But I had Embiid, Giannis, Jokic now for a couple of weeks. But what Embiid has been doing recently to me it doesn't cement it, but it places him on top. KJM were presented by Progressive Insurance, and I understand I think key, back. the he's technical back. issues have been ironed out. Are you? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, you're hearing me. Yeah, we yeah, got we you. Got you. We, 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 we've been, been hearing, hearing you. So what's up? Where are you oh, on the no, MVP race in the NBA, Key? I felt like, I mean, it, look, a month ago, you guys were screaming, it's going to Jokic, it's going to Jokic, it's going to Jokic. That was everybody, right? Oh, he's going to be the three-time MVP, no championship. The entire time, I think Jay, myself, and maybe even Gates to a degree talked about how can they give the MVP away a month ago and the season hasn't even concluded. You got a lot of changes between the time that everybody was screaming it to where we are today. Denver certainly has started to slide where Embiid has started to take off along with his team. I think they won, what, nine in a row, something like that. So, and, and when you look at the Denver Nuggets, they've struggled. They've gone to places that you didn't expect them to be. They were supposed to be the number one seed, and everybody was, they were going to run through everybody and all that. And, you know, he finally got all his cast members back healthy, but here we go. Since when was I on the Jokic train? I mean, you and Jay and Yates. I was never on the Jokic I was bandwagon. Jokic train. Yeah, as much no, as anybody. I, I was. Yeah. Well, I mean, when I see... I, when I'm talking about the Jokic train, I mean just the, he's going to win his third MVP. Well, where, yeah, that, that I mean that's it's the, the listen. That's 800-484-5131. What do you have to lose? Call 800-484-5131. Again, 800-484-5131. The Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council present the story of Tom and Levi. Tom is the smartest man I know. He's been a professor at two major universities. He's been a teacher for over 40 years. One day, he told me that he was having um, problems in his classes. I think one of the students had asked the question, and he didn't remember the answer. And I also noticed that he was letting his class out earlier than they were supposed to let out. And he was telling them that he's doing it as a favor to them. But I think in reality, he just wanted to get out of there. Um, I was really starting to worry because I saw something was wrong. Levi and I talked about how it would change our lives. But he was there beside me. And my love for him was just immense. When something feels different, it could be Alzheimer's. Now is the time to talk. Visit alz.org slash our stories to learn more. A message from the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. I noticed that my central vision started to blur. The figures that are usually straight started to distort to become wavy. What are these little dark spots were blurring that I'm seeing? There's a blind spot like a blob over my vision now. Is my vision lost forever? Why did I wait so long to see a retina specialist? Retinal disease can steal your eyes. A battle for... I watch movies about because there's so many times where we walk into a room and we're automatically assumed to be less than. And Billie Jean King, she put us on the map as equal. One of the biggest things that I hope for the future um, for women in sports is just equity and equality. Women at every single level in sport, they compete at the same exact level as the men that are doing the same. So having the same facilities, having the same access, having the same resources, being paid the same amount of money is crucial for women to be able to do their job. And the fact That women are still able to compete not only at the same level
to pay and give the resources to women that they absolutely deserve. What I wish for the future of women in sport is opportunity. I think that we have seen when you build something and let women be a part of it, people show up. We are seeing attendance figures increase, ratings increase. And I would truly love to get where the attention we pay to sports does not determine, is not determined by gender. We do so many things that are determined by gender in sports, and it's ridiculous. It's time we stop. If it's a good game, put it on TV, regardless of gender. If it's a good highlight, put it on TV, regardless of gender. We have got to stop letting the past dictate our future and our present, and um, women are building something big. Here's Reeves with the ball. Reeves driving at the rim. Pulls up 10 footer. Good. 29 for Austin. 58 seconds remaining. That's how it sounded on 710 ESPN LA. John Ireland on the call is Austin Reeves scored a career high 35. Akers hung on for a 111 105 win over the Magic. And that puts Los Angeles back in ninth in the Western Conference, tied with Minnesota. Lakers to the 10th seed. He's like an actual, legit NBA rotation. Like, they, they find some guys. Paul George had 29 points as the Clippers handled the Trailblazers. They uh, got their sixth straight loss to Trailblazers. 117-102 win for the Clippers. And... The eight-seeded Ole Miss knocked off number one seed Stanford, 54-49. Yes, I'm talking about the women's tournament, obviously. Stanford became the first number one seed since 09 to fail to reach the Sweet 16 in the women's NCAA tournament. Sports Center is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Still overpaying for a razor in this economy? With Dollar Shave Club, you can get a top shelf shave at a regular shelf price. Dollar Shave Club is available at a store near you in the men's razor aisle. That's it. That's the end. <laughs> NBA MVP looked like Jokic. I don't know. Three weeks ago, was running away with his third straight MVP, even though he's generally not considered a top three and often not a top five player in the NBA. George, George Carl, former head coach, years and years and years in the NBA, said the following about his observation about Joel Embiid. I just want everybody to really listen to this because we're going to debunk George Carl yeah. coming out of this. Let's listen. For me, I don't want to bad mouth him because I think he's really, really good. I mean, a lot of my assistant coaches were in Philadelphia when he was a young player, and they kept telling me he's going to be the best guy ever to play the game, best big guy ever to play yeah. the game. I, I see him moving in that direction, but he takes it. I don't know. He takes too many possessions off. He has lazy body language. He gets angry at things that we don't understand why. I just don't know if he's that, that NBA NBA pro that we all love because he's a competitive SOB. And he, but, you know, from what I know in Philadelphia, everybody says he's playing great. The games I've seen, he has played really, really well. And he's played great in the fourth quarters come with a lot of comeback wins. Um, so I'm, I, I just think it might be my, you know, I can, I can only like one big guy, and I'm going to take Yogi over everybody. Okay, so – and I love George Carl. George Carl was my coach, USA basketball, um, a great dude. I always have a lot of fun with him. But George Carl, I just told you, he hasn't seen all the games. He literally said, oh, well, you know, for the games I've seen, uh, well, what I'm hearing, no. Like, I, I, don't wanna, I don't want you to tell the national audience what you're hearing. I want you to tell the national audience, George, what you're seeing if we're going to start talking about who deserves to win MVPs, it's important that the people who vote for who the MVPs are watch the games. 
And I get that there's a lot of other things to do. People have their lives, and I understand that. But, like, you can't just watch a couple of games and be like, well, now I'm going to make this general assessment that he has poor body language and he takes possessions off. No, don't say that's what I've heard. Say that's what I see. Well, he said what he's heard is he from his assistant coaches that he might be the best big man ever eventually, right? And, Key, I think Jay hit on something there. It sounds to me like George Carl probably flipping channels, catches a little piece of a game, catches Embiid on a possession where that he feels he took off and then draws a larger conclusion. Um, because I've seen Jokic play what Clyde Frazier calls matador defense on a lot of possessions, kind of escorting a guy to the rim. Um, Giannis out of the three bigs ish, right? Giannis is in that category ish. Giannis is the one who I think of as not taking possessions off either side of the floor. Both Jokic and Embiid, I get where someone might say that because typical of bigs, that happens. They're big guys playing a fast game. Where are you on this, Key? I mean, I, I, I hear what George Carl is saying because he's probably getting that information from his assistant coaches. The people are in Philadelphia, and he's also doing like Jay saying, not really paying attention to it. So his mind is already clouded when he does get an opportunity and a chance to see MB play uh, what a little bit. You know, he, he right now, you know, he's probably the MVP, you know, with what their team is doing and, and how he's just elevated his game. Um, and he, he's as difficult a guy to game plan, plan for as as there is in the game. I mean, Giannis is crazy ridiculous. You know, Jokic is, you know, same. And, and this guy may, may be even more difficult, you know, if, if that's possible. What, what do you want? You know, I'm not saying when you say this is why I always bring up the difference between better and greater. Greater is about how you did in your era, right? Compared to your contemporaries. And then you can start talking about, well, how strong was the era? And and better is just in more absolute turn. In, in absolute terms, athletes are getting better and better and better. So I'm not suggesting Joel Embiid is as great as Shaquille O'Neal or Wilt Chamberlain or Bill Russell or someone. I'm not suggesting that, but I am saying this in terms of better. In terms of just overall skills, both ends of the floor, yeah. he's probably the best to ever do it. Joel Embiid? Yeah. Yes. Probably well, the you best know, to, you, you, if you include size. And not, not like a guy like Giannis. He's a real wide body, tall, strong center. So a lot of times, like, people have clouded judgment because what you've seen before in the past, all of a sudden that becomes who a player forever is in your mind, right? So there has been a lot of issues of Joel Embiid being lazy sometimes on the court. We've addressed that on more show. years ago than recent. Yeah. yeah, for sure. In the last two years where he's been really elevating his game, there has been bad body language from Joel Embiid from time to time. Alf Horford torched him in the playoffs and, three to four years ago. But that's 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 okay. Like, that's not who Joel Embiid is right now. 